years, the cassette tape recorder had been the convenience word in the music world, but now cassettes had invaded the field of television. They're video cassettes, carrying both picture and sound, and within a decade, they'll probably be as much of a household item as your own television set. Video tapes are nothing new, but the cassettes are. The video cassette just released by Sony is made to work with any color or black and white television set. It's the simplicity of this innovation that's so revolutionary. All you do is push the cassette in the machine, punch the start button, and up comes the picture on the set. The sound is stereo and the picture's in color. It works just exactly like a small cassette recorder. The video cassette can be stopped right in the middle of a show, taken out, and then reinserted later on so you can finish your show. Of course, like anything else new and different, it's expensive. The video cassette machine alone cost about $1,000, and a one-hour cassette runs $30. Besides this, a recorder is available that will take programs right off the air for playback. But just like anything else new, it won't be long before American homes have not only book and music libraries, but TV cassette libraries as well. Representatives have been able to take part in discussions on some of the more controversial aspects of broadcast TV versus cable. Some broadcast groups have complained that the FCC has deregulated cable television to the point that it has created unfair competition for broadcasters. FCC Chairman Richard Wiley says that's not necessarily so. Perhaps we've overregulated uh, a lot of industries uh, in the past, and we have to determine whether or not we really need those regulations and whether the whole systems won't, wouldn't work better uh, with perhaps a little less uh, federal oversight. One of the more volatile questions in recent years has been the issue of pay cable TV. Wiley had some thoughts on that as well. This is a service that's coming, that it will provide additional diversity for the American people. And after all, if a family wants to stay home and watch a, a film in their living room and is willing to pay for this additional service, I'm not sure it's the government's place to say that this shouldn't happen. I then ask him if it weren't conceivable that a small minority of pay cable TV groups could wield enough power to outbid the free broadcast entities on some of the better programming. Yes, that's conceivable, and that's why we've had so-called anti-siphoning regulations at the commission. On another matter, Wiley says the use of cable Cable television back east to broadcast pornographic movies is being studied closely, the major hang-up being the unclear definition of what is indecent. Michael Brown, Channel 8 News at the Dallas Convention Center.